All right, I, I think we're up. Uh, you don't have to, like, keep quiet. It's just... Let me... Oh, I guess I can't. What the heck? All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another... <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to a another Blender tutorial. Like, if there weren't enough already, we are making our own. So, um, I said I was gonna do a little mushroom, so, uh, well, actually, supposedly this tutorial would, could be, like, uh, some, some basic skills that, uh, and, uh, a lot of people can learn from, or, or that's, uh, or that would be, like, the summary of what this tutorial would be. So, uh, by, what do you call it? By culture, like by cultural means, and for practice, always remember to delete the default cube. There you go. Uh, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a new file. So uh, that basically didn't matter. <laughs> um, and I guess we'll start from here. So what we're gonna do, um, is we're going to go to the front of the cube. Uh, in Blender, we have uh, a 3D space that we can work in, but we still kind of respect the um, the fronts, the sides, the top, and the bottom. And we can control those using the numpad. So just remember to have your gnome lock on. Uh, we'll press 1 on the numpad, and we'll instantly go to the front of the cube. So right here... We can press three. We'll go to the left side of the cube, or what would be considered the left side on the cube. Again, this is on the numpad. Uh, we do control three, and uh, holding down the control and clicking or pressing down on any directional uh, key for the uh, key on the numpad. We can uh, switch to the inverse. So if I go to the front view, I can also do control one to go to the back view. Uh, we go to the side view and then we will go control three to do the inverse of that side view. Uh, we can do seven for top view. We'll do control seven and we'll get the bottom view. All right. So we'll go back to looking at the front view. Remember, that's one on the numpad. Um, and then if you have uh, these arrows on your numpad, we can also uh, rotate around using those arrows and it'll move the view that you have here respectively. So eight goes to the top, eight, two goes to the bottom, four and six, they move it to side to side. Or we sort of orbit around the cube. Again, we'll go back to front view, that's one. Uh, and we will enter edit mode. Um, what we want to start to do is have our cube um, on the origin point because this will be uh, sort of a reference, but not to us, but we can use it as a reference, but we'll more use it uh, for the computer to use it as a reference or Blender specifically. Um, so we can enter tab uh, to go into edit mode. So if you press tab on the keyboard, you can see that now we have these vertices or points in, um, these points on our cube. These are called vertices. Um, each vertice is a point in space uh, depending on where uh, this orange point, the origin point it's called, uh, starts out from. So if we can see here, uh, we can see what location they take place in by uh, opening up this little tiny menu that's on the right here. There's a little little arrow here. So if like we go like this on it, uh, hold down the mouse button, the left mouse button on it, we can pull this up. Um, and then we can see that uh, we have um, our vertex selected. So we can select each vertex and we can see their respective location. 
from the origin point. So if we set all these to uh, zero, zero on the X, it'll move it on the uh, this X axis here, which is this red line. Uh, we move it on the Y to zero. And then on the Y axis, which is this green line here, it moves it right to zero. Um, and you can tell uh, that when I'm rotating this uh, this cube, you can see this little uh, globe or this orb of, of the viewpoints. You can see that Y is green, X is red as reference. And then uh, the Z axis, we'll set it to zero here. And you can see that, oh, this kind of looked weird. Through the perspective, we could see like, oh wait, what happened? It just turned back to normal. No, actually. We moved it on the Z-axis. Um, it doesn't show you the Z-axis here, but that's fine. We can use this as reference. On the Z-axis, it's set it to zero. So setting all of the um, all of these uh, this vertex's uh, location information to zero brings it back here to the origin point. So we'll go back and explain this other thing, which we call. So this is a vertex. If we get two vertex, uh, sorry, vertices, uh, we create something called an edge. Now we're in the uh, vert uh, vert uh, vertex selection tool, but over here on the top left, we have this little um, toggle buttons that switches our selection mode. And this, in this case, we actually selected two vertices that are connecting to or have a connection with each other. Uh, and this is basically us selecting an edge. We can go here, click on edge select, and we can see that if we select any sides or these sort of drops on the cube, we're selecting these edges. So if I select this edge back here, go back to vertex mode, uh, we can see we selected two vertices. And over here, the last toggle that we have is the face selection tool. So we can select a face, which would be four vertices or four, four edges. Four, four edges. <laughs> uh, we go back to edges. We can see that uh, in the edge selection, we have all these four edges selected, and then we go back to vertices. We have all four selected. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to select these four vertices on the top of it. Actually, before we do that, uh, rather, we're going to select all of them, all the vertices by pressing A. Bonk. So pressing A will, it's our, our select all shortcut. Uh, and when, if we press a twice, dot, dot, we deselect everything. So we're going to select everything with a again by pressing a, boop. we have everything selected and we're going to do the thing that we talked about. Uh, we're going to move this cube up to its origin on the Z axis. By holding down control, we can move the cube in uh, increments. Uh, so these are sub increments of the normal uh, metric increments that we have here. These are the squares right here. These are called our increments. So if we hold down, if we press G and then we press Z, it's translating our cube over. So G is for translation. We can move the cube around or move the cube's location uh, by pressing G on the keyboard. We can then press G and if we want to move uh, whatever we have selected on one of these axes, we can press the axis uh, letter on the keyboard. So G and then Z will move our cube on the Z axis. And that's the thing we want. But we want to be precise in moving this cube on right smack dab on the origin zero. 
the origin is since we created the object with our 3d cursor right here uh which would be this um circle surrounding that origin point uh we're st straight right there in the middle of where the the global location will be set to zero so we do g on the z we'll bring this up uh using control and then pressing the left uh, mouse button we apply that all right so we did this to be able to uh use um this origin point as a sort of platform so we know where our 3d model is going to be placed on uh, so if I press out a tab, this also helps us, uh, resize, the, um, the object, or we can spread this object sort of like, um, uh, easily on top of any surface. So one example, uh, why we set the ob object right on the origin point, we can press S to scale. Um. And as you can see, we have uh, our object scaling, but since the origin point is right on the bottom of the cube, when we scale the object, uh, it's gonna respect the origin and always move or scale where the origin is. So it it helps us uh, it helps us make Blender reference that point whenever we're doing something around it. There you go. We'll Control Z that. All right, now we'll we'll move on to making this this fungus or fungi fungus fungi. Okay, so we'll go into wireframe uh, view mode by pressing holding down Z. You can go into a quick uh, menu and then move to the left with the mouse, and then you let go of Z then you can uh, instantly move over to these view modes that we have. We have four. We were in solid, but we're going to, we're going to go to wireframe mode. And this will let us just select um, any, uh, any vertex right here in the background. So if you can see, if I go to, back to the solid mode, go to front view and try to select all the cube. Okay. I want to select all the vertices on the cube, but you'll see that I've only selected the front of the cube. And that's because these vertices were blocking the uh, selection path over, um, uh, from these vertices. And instead, we only selected what we were able to see. So we'll tap A twice to deselect and we'll go to wireframe mode. Again, holding down Z, going to the left. There we go. And doing this, uh, we hold down left mouse button. We click and drag. There we go. And you can see that we're able to select both of these, these vertices uh, instead of only getting the one in the front. All right. So what we're gonna what we're gonna do is we're gonna select these top vertices and then we're gonna hit a key on the keyboard uh the letter e um for ex extrude now holding down control again we'll move it up to the second biggest unit here or the biggest increment right there so if we go back to solid view we can see that we created a little bit more topology up here uh, now, we want to do this because if we actually go back and instead of hitting extrude, we won't be able uh, and hitting G to translate these vertices up here. We won't have this um, this extra topology that we had right here in the middle. Now, we could do this and actually go back and hit something called Control R. And we create this uh, this ed ed this edge loop right here, or a subdivision of these two sides. Uh, and we can 
uh, since it's already in the middle, or we can tell it's in the middle, because we're still moving in the ink uh, on Blender's units, uh, uh, Blender's un uh, increment units or increments. We know that this would uh, um, this will stay in the middle. So if we hit the right mouse button, um, it'll uh, go back to its original place where we marked it. And we won't translate it anymore. So there we can have that right there in the middle. Then the next step we're going to take is go back to wireframe mode. We're going to select these top vertices. Again, grabbing this side. Go to solid view. And what we're going to do is we're going to hit the extrude button again. So that's E again. We'll let go with the right mouse button, so it'll stay in place. Um, and then we're going to go back to front view. We'll hit S to scale. And we're going to scale it up one unit. So we'll hold down control and we will reach all the way to there. There you go. So we sized it up one unit. See if we can press S and then press one. Oh, S two. There we go. We can also tell Blender how many uh, units we want to size the model up, but we can't size to one because right now it it is in fact in one or in. It sort of works like percentages, so if we size it at 1, it stays to its original form. Well, uh, uh, respecting where it started from, so what we want to do is press S to scale and press 2 on our keyboard, not the numpad, on our keyboard. We press 2 and it'll go to the second increment here. But again, if you don't want to do that, we can size it and then manually move it uh, by holding down control and making it to those points. Now right here we kind of have this, uh, what would you call it? Kind of looks like a, kind of looks like a tree, but it's not going to be a tree. Yeah, uh, so let's go back into wireframe mode. We'll hold, click and drag, select these top vertices and press G on the Z axis to move it down here. There we go. One unit. Um, if you want to do the old keyboard trick, we can uh, G on the Z and we'll move it. What would it be? Uh, minus minus one. There we go. So one worked uh, when we're translating things, but not when we're scaling things. So if we move that one, the one is represent, representing this little square uh, unit right here. Again, if we do G on the Z minus one, there we go. We move it down one increment. All right, so now it looks a little bit less like a tree. Or however you see it, right? We're going to close this out by resizing the window here, and we'll just drag it over there. We don't really need it right now. All right. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go to these tabs on the side. You can see here we have... Uh, we have the object properties right here by default, but we're going to go down to this little wrench here, the modifier properties. We click on that and we're going to add a modifier called, let's see, doo -doo, subdivision surface. There we go. Oh, now we can see that our little, uh, Fun guy isn't as fun 
<laughs> as we thought he would be. Uh, and more looks like an acorn, actually. <laughs> Angie, check this out. <laughs> Didn't realize that we could actually make the mushroom look more like an acorn. Uh, this, we might be able to, like, retexture this and make it look more like an acorn. Interesting. Like acorn asset. Hmm? Add it to the notes. All right, we're going to hit tab. So we want this to look more like a mushroom rather than an acorn. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, add a loop cut here. Here we go with control R again. We're going to loop, move this loop cut now this uh, all the way down where it meets these vertices right here. Again, holding down control, we can move in sub increments. Right here, we're going to move it up. One, I think we'll be okay with one. Uh, actually, we'll leave it here. Uh, we'll apply it without moving it by clicking right mouse button on our mouse. There you go. And we're going to do that again, actually. We're going to get a uh, loop cut here. And we just wanted to keep uh, the middle of these, of this face, because if I added the loop cut here first, moved it up one, applied it, we would miss out on this face's whole um, uh, uh, middle here. Will actually be a little bit more above than usual. So we'll start with making a loop cut here. Applying it without moving. Create another loop cut here. There you go. And we will move it here. So one up here. Okay, it looks like this uh, mushroom's gonna uh take a little uh a, a little stroll. No, look more like a mushroom. <laughs> I think. All right. All right, and then after that, we're going to add the subdivision modifier again. Oh, we have it applied, but we can set it to hmm, two port two. There we go. Actually, I'll be right back. Whoa. <laughs> Should I like put the the BRB? Boop. Okay. Let's go back here. All right, now that we have our little mushroom model, Uh, what we want to actually do is give it a little bit of texture so it doesn't look all gray and plain like this. 
Oh, if you find yourself rotating around a point in space where your mesh isn't seeable or it's not orbiting around your mesh like this, it's really annoying. So we're going to grab our mesh by clicking on it with left click and we're going to press period on the numpad and it'll quickly set us over to center the mesh around our view. So there we go. Now we're rotating around here. All right. So next I want us to texture this model. Uh, or actually, let's go back into edit mode. Uh, we'll set the um, subdivision modifier to one. And what I actually want to do is size this loop of vertices. Uh, all right, to select this loop, or for loop selection, when you hold down Alt, you're able to click on a set um between these vertices, for example, if you select between these vertices, you're able to select all the vertices um, along this line or along the loop. So holding down Alt and pressing the left mouse button here, we're able to select an entire loop that we have there. And we're gonna size this down by holding on control for increments. We'll size it down one, two. We'll do one, I think. Size it down to one. We'll go down here, select this loop, size it up. We'll do one there. All right. Should it should look like this. It kind of gives the mushroom a little, a bit more, what you call it, a bit more like a stem, a lumpy stem, a lumpy stem. All right. So we're going to uh, texture this uh, mushroom by using Blender's uh, texture paint. Um, but before we do that, we want to actually set up a UV map for it. So Blender knows where... We're coloring on top of the mushroom. So to uh, let's press tab to go into object mode. And um, we do this because I want to apply the subdivision modifier on here. And that's just to give us this uh, symmetry right here on our mushroom. So if we didn't have, let me, so if we click over here in real time this way, we can get our cube back again to what it actually looks like. Uh, you, you can see that we don't have any symmetry here. And if we try to add a line right here to make this symmetry happen, uh, and we go back to the subdivision modifier, this won't work because it'll start to make our mushroom a bit more squarish. And we don't want that. We want this mushroom nice and nice and round. N nice and round. Like, like you would see a mushroom in... Uh, <laughs> what was I going to say? In real space? Not uh, outside. In the real world, right? So, we'll do... <laughs> we'll do Ctrl-C twice here. Uh, and we're going to... Since we already have this line of symmetry, uh, we hit Tab to go into Object Mode because we can't apply it in Edit Mode. We go over here, Tab, and Apply. Go tab again, and we can see that now our models uh, has more topology than what we had it before. But now it's round, and we have a line of symmetry. So that's good. All right. Now what we're going to do is we're going back, and we're going to do another subdivision here. Well, and now we have our even rounder mushroom. We're going to leave it as so. Um, actually, we'll again hit the viewport toggle so we can see our original mushroom. And what we're going to do is we're going to go out of edit mode by hitting tab. We'll go up here to these little tabs. You can see that we're right now in layout. 
we could have been in modeling to do the edit mode, but in layout, since we already started there, we'll just um, leave, it, leave it off there. Um, we'll go into this tab called UV editing. Hit that. Let's get a close view of our little mush. All right. So to do UV editing, uh, what we're going to try to do is we're going to set some seams or our mushroom to sort of divide the, the space between, between these faces. Um, we're going to do that so we don't have any uh, topology that's stretching on top of our UV map. If we have any stretching faces and anything we apply on the UV map is going to be uh, stretched out with the face as well. Or uh, it's distorted, if anything. So we'll go to front view. Uh, and we'll sort of grab everything with A. And you see that... Blender tried to make a UV map uh, just like so, but this UV map won't work for us uh, when we want to apply any textures on top of the model or we move stuff around. So all of these are the topology that we have right here. So if we go into face selection, I can select a specific face and you can see that these faces are not the same size as what we have on our mushroom here. And they're almost everywhere, kind of. They're not connecting with each other. So what we want to try to do is do a mark our seams for the UV map instead of letting Blender do what it wants right here. So we'll go to edit mode. Uh, we'll do a, uh, okay, so we'll mark the seams down here. We can grab, let's go to front view. We'll grab this right here. Um, so we try to grab this with the loop, loop, uh, loop selection tool, but you can see that we're not able to get the complete loop. Uh, so what we're gonna do is hold down Alt plus Shift when selecting these loop loops. So we can select the entirety of the thing. We'll press U and we can bring up the UV mapping uh, menu. And we're gonna click on this option called Mark Seam. And then we'll get this red uh, outline here on the on the lines between the vertices so that tells us that we're we made a seam right there on this model so right here we'll go to the back of the mushroom or actually let's select this bottom bit right here again with the loop selection tool and we will mark our seam here by pressing u and then mark seam We'll go back to the front view and we'll go control one on the numpad to go to the back side of the mushroom and we'll select these uh these vertices that run along here let's deselect by pressing a twice and we will use the edge selection tool for this one we'll grab so click on left click on this edge and then hold down shift to add on to our selection here. There we go. So we selected this entire backside of our mushroom. We will mark our seam there, like so. And then we will mark seams on top of the mushroom as well. So right here, we're going to select what would be the corner of our original cube. Grabbing these guys again, left click to select and plus shift to add on to our selection. So we'll go get the four corners here one, two, three, four. That's three, 
one, two, three, four. That's four corners. There we go. And then we'll press U and then mark seam. And there we go. That'll be all the seams we're going to mark on this. All right. Now we're going to go back to vertex selection. We're going to press A once and we have all our uh, topology selected. And with that selected, we'll press U and instead of mark seam, we're, we're going to press unwrap here. Book. There we go. And you can see that now we have a nice and clean uh, UV map of our mushroom. So right here we have uh, these on the um, sort of the border of our UV map. So we want to try to keep it right inside the UV map without touching uh, these sides or corners or going outside of the UV map. Because if that were to happen, we will have our texture repeat on top of our, um, our mesh and we don't really want that. We'll sort of have a sort of bleed into the next mesh over. We're going to select these so we can select an entire uh, segment or island by going over this island right here of topology with our mouse and then pressing L. We select that entire island there. Press G to translate. We'll move it over here uh, without touching these borders. Right, double, double A to deselect. We'll press L over this one, this little flower. We'll move it up here. And right there without touching the borders again. We, we see that we have this touching too. We don't want this either or the topology touching on top of each other. So we're gonna go over this island, pressing L, we select this. R to rotate. You can rotate with R. That also works over here on the viewport, like so. We'll use R to rotate here. G to translate, and we'll move this right over here. There we go. So nothing's touching each other, and they're not touching the border. All right. So we'll... Double tap A to deselect, and we have our mushroom all UV mapped and ready to texture paint on it. So, what I'm gonna do is let's see, so press tab here to get out of that mode, or we can hit that right there. But what we want to try to go and do is enter the texture paint tab right up here. Boop. There we go. Now you can see that our mushroom is purple instead of uh, this weird gray color or the default gray color. Uh, we don't want it to be purple though. So we actually, um, this purple is signifying that it doesn't have uh, any uh, material on it. So what we want to do is give it that material. Uh, uh, to make a, a texture image, we're going to go over here on this left side. We can see that our UV map is displayed for this object. We're going to hit this new button right here. Boop. And we're going to uh, keep our default settings. So this is uh, the size of our image or the image where uh, Blender is going to create for this model. Uh, we'll give it a name. We'll call it mushroom base color there we go uh and then we'll uh keep everything how it is and we will press okay Boop. there we go and now we have this since our base color was black it's gonna use black here uh for the entire image or to represent the entire image so right there, uh, we are ready to start painting on top of our model. I'm lying, actually. I for completely forgot the most important part. Uh, we still don't have any material on our mushroom, so uh, I, I believe it already set one up for us. 
but we don't want this to be the base color. Uh, we want to go down here where it says base color. Click on this little dot right here. It's like a little donut. Click on that. We will get a drop down menu. And right here, we're going to we're going to hit the image texture option. Pop. All right, so we have the image texture option right here selected. We go down over here and click not new. Oh, actually, since we created this image texture inside of Blender, we can go over here on this little drop down menu for this, the things we already have uh, linked to this um, to this sort of uh, blend file or this sort of session. And we can see that we have three options. We're gonna go to the option where uh, we called the image texture mushroom base color. Boop. And there we go. Now it has our black um, base color that we started out with. Um, now when we're texture painting, we actually wanna have this to the preferred um, subdivision uh that we want our mushroom to look like so we're going to apply uh actually i'll show you a little example why we want this so what would happen is that uh since our object is sort of uh has less topology it doesn't have a uh a subdivision applied to it well we'll go back to the tools and we will Use the fill bucket right here in our brush options. We'll use the fill bucket and we will use white as our fill. Click on top of the model and it fills up all of these, um, all of the, uh, the displayed faces on here onto our UV map. Well, not our UV map anymore. Well, this is just presenting our UV map mushroom. But now if we go back to the modifiers here and we toggle the viewport button, you can see that now we have this sort of uh, black tears right there. So if we go back here, um, if we move or like zoom in and zoom out, it refreshes the topology that the mushroom has now. So you can see that these little bits are being created because the faces are now bleeding over into the black of our image texture. So right here, if we go back to the brush instead of uh, the fill bucket, um, I'll get a close up. Let's see where this is. So if I color this in, there you go. It appears that this side would be here. So yeah, if we cover this up, we fix that problem over here as well. Over here as well. So we want to have our mushrooms um, to the preferred subdivision that we want uh, before we do any painting, because these tears will happen if we try to apply a subdivision later on. So right here, we're going to go back to uh, object mode and we're going to set the shading to smooth. So we select our object in object mode by and then we uh, right click, right mouse button click. We bring up the object context menu. And right there, we're gonna hit the shades, uh, smooth shading option. There we go. So we, ha we have a more, um, a, a more uh, eye candy mushroom, right? Or <laughs> more. <laughs> what, 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 what did they say? Like, Talk about eye candy. <laughs> really? Oh no. What am I saying? Yeah, I was like Oh no. Well, I mean it ended as a more like aesthetically pleasing sort of way. Yeah. <laughs> I used to say it too. Maybe your friend's kinda weird. I'm gonna point it out. <laughs> All right. Oh man, too bad it didn't like capture your voice and stuff. Oh. Yeah. All right. Now, now that we have that over with, geez. <laughs> um, they're fun guys, you know. 
All right. Uh, okay. So, uh, look, I like, I like the, um, the, um, uh, sort of viewport shading and everything, but I rather prefer we go into our view, uh, viewport shading option up here. So we get a little bit more light and then we can tell uh, these differences between dark and black here. It kind of makes it look, uh, our mushroom look a bit more realistic with lighting than going back here and having this uh, uh, grayish tone to our coloring. So we'll go over here to a viewport shading. It looks a bit more pleasing uh, to paint on. And actually, I am going to move my window over. Uh, we'll go down here. I'll bring this up here and our window will toggle the full screen. We'll bring this down here. Oop. Oh, there's a little bit of Amelia and I will s just switch over to my drawing tablet here. Uh, I'll grab my display properties. We'll go down to the, our other display. There we go. It sort of makes it easier for me to draw on here. Now, if you have a digital pen, this uh, this this is the time to use it. <laughs> Move this up here. There we go. All right. Let's see. So right here. Let me just set up this right here. All right. Okay, let's go back here. Right here, if you have a digital pen, ooh, ooh, what a lucky, what a lucky fellow. <laughs> uh, this might be a little bit hard to do it with a mouse, so I, I really suggest to get a digital pen. Oop, I colored the entire thing. Uh, what I want to do, is I want to bring this more over here, and then right here, uh. To make this a bit more easier to orbit around the screen. Um, sort of like what you would use for Krita to orbit around the canvas. Or not orbit, actually. To move the canvas around, rotate the canvas, and things like that. Uh, Blender doesn't uh, come readily prepared uh, for those sort of uh, movements that you would do with those programs. So we're going to actually go over here to our... Where is it? We're gonna go to edit and under edit, there's a option called preferences. We'll click on that. And my preferences came up here. So let me just grab this and bring this down here. There we go. All right, we're gonna select this option. So uh, your preferences will start here in interface. We're not gonna worry about this. We're gonna go down here in our input tab. And we're going to click on this little toggle that says emulate three button mouse. There we go. And then this will emulate our, a three button mouse on our keyboard. That's what it means. So we'll close out of that. That'll save it. And then holding down alt. Um, in Krita, I believe it's you hold down shift and then you can move the canvas around. But in Blender, we use the alt plus control or Alt plus, plus shift, or just alt itself to orbit around the object. Holding down alt, moving it on here with our pen. Holding down alt plus control, we can zoom out and in. Holding down alt and shift, we can move our viewport or translate our viewport over to other sections of our 3D space. So actually, We'll go back to object mode. We have our mushroom hit period on our numpad. So now we have it centered here. And we'll go back to texture paint. There we go. All right. So over here, we're going to go back over here in our toolbox, our tools tab. And we're going to select a little uh, color that'll give us our Another base color instead of white. I want to use white for a different type of shading. So I'll click on this little bar right here. We can open up a bigger 
menu for our color selection. I want to sort of sort of not not too peach, sort of light brown. I think right there, and then we'll hit the fill bucket like so. We'll fill that in. All right. So instead of this, I use. I think we'll just leave it normal to what it normally is. I'll just move the mic a little bit. All right. So let's see. I want to start. I was drawing a uh, orange mushroom, so I think I'll try to paint an orange mushroom here. So with our brush tool, we can do a couple of things. Um, when we press F, uh, we can decide the radius of our brush by moving the mouse over like this, bigger radius or a small itty bitty radius right there. Uh, I want to increase our radius here just a tad uh, to start coloring on top of here. Now uh, we don't want white, so let's go back. Um, Another thing, another thing we want to control is the strength. So right here, we can control the strength right from the get go, but I want complete full strength for what I'm going to do here. I'm going to try to apply some base colors first. Uh, I'll do seven on the numpad to go to the top. I'll deselect this little toggle here. This is the pressure sensitivity toggle. So if I deselect that, it will straight away go from zero to one without having to press down really hard on my pen. Uh, I want to go over, let's see, we'll go to a little bit orange like that. And we'll go over here like so. There we go. All right, let me just go over it one more time to make sure. And I feel like it's a bit out. Let me go to over here. This little toggle would be the render view. And we'll edit this to be our scene world. Deselect scene world and scene lights. And we can sort of see a little bit better what it would actually look like. So our scene world, it gives us a little probe that we can utilize in Blender. If I increase the world opacity, we can see that now we have a bit of a blurry world in our scene. Maybe I'll draw on here. Uh, if, you, if you can't use this mode, I suggest going to texture mode. It's kind of the same thing, really. Yeah. All right, so right here, we're going to continue drawing on top of our mushroom. And I want to go over this section right there. So we want to kind of watch out for this sort of um, area down here, because if we use our brush and go over here and we're like ah oh, i didn't want that uh we since we're drawing in uh, 3d space we're actually drawing only on the viewable faces so you can see here that i drew on here but it didn't quite reach down here so right there uh we don't actually want this to happen this kind of looks like artifacts on our model so let's do ctrl c We'll go back and we'll just rotate around our mushroom and color right on top of here. Like so. Oh. So <laughs> we have a little spider friend here. Hold on. I'm gonna catch this guy. 
<laughs> what is he doing? Oh, he's on my mouse. Okay. <laughs> what the heck? Let me see if I can go grab a... <laughs> Where's this guy? Squish. I don't see him anymore. Oh, there he is. Let's see if I can. Uh, all right, and the stream is full of surprises today. <laughs> Let's see if the spider didn't have any any friends around. I took one of his friends out like two weeks ago, and then this guy just decided to show up. Where did he even come from? Like, I have no spider webs above me either. All right. <laughs> He's like, hello, Denny. I'm here to see what's going on. <laughs> it looks like, looks like you're making a mushroom, I see. Hmm, that's pretty nice. That's pretty nice mushroom. What, is, what if he's like, uh, Danny, when, when are you going to uh, make a spider in Blender? 
I, I really feel like there's a lack of spiders in the blender community. I, mean, I, <laughs> I want uh, all spiders around the world to be heard. Like, come on, we only get, uh, we only, we only get, uh, what's it called? Reference in all the Spider-Man movies, but I don't want to be known f from those, uh, f <laughs> uh, from those cameos. I want to star in my own show called uh, Spideyverse. Like, no, Spider, you can't, you can't have, have that title that's already been used by Sony. <laughs> no spider. You can't stop spider. We'll we'll call it spider spider because I'm already a spider, and my race would be spider, right? Yes, yeah, spider. I get it. All right, we're gonna. Mm, we're going to go to the pressure sensitivity over here. Toggle that on, and we'll toggle the radius too. And toggling the radius will give us a um, a way to control our radius by using our pressure, as you can see here. I sort of want to go over this so we don't have any any sort of a weird solid lines here. We'll just go over it like so. And we can also avoid coloring right on the stem of our mushroom here. All right, we'll just do that fairly quickly. All right. Our orange looks a bit pale. I, I think they'll be fine. See if we can just. I will just sort of do some little orbital movements here. Uh, now I would enter time lapse mode, but uh, since this is a live recording. I'm unable to do that. Uh, so lucky you, you get to get to watch me paint over here. <laughs> I don't think I'm ready to uh, uh, do the uh, to party over here. I don't think this is a dance off I can win. Uh, well, get your own computer and you can stream. Right. <laughs> Jeez. <I'm literally> just... <laughs> Even like streaming on my computer and stuff. All right, we'll do that. And what? Is I'm just having a one-sided conversation. You're not being picked up. <laughs> All right, uh, let's see. I wanna. Looks like I didn't go over here. Oop. Get closer here. Go over this side. Yeah, slimes do that eventually. All right, so another neat trick is that if we hold down S and we go over a color on here, we can get a, uh, we can have our color selection tool. You don't have to press down on it, you just hold down S, let go of S over the color you desire. Over the color you desire. And then over here on our uh, toolbox here, we can go down here to color palette and we can create a new color palette. There we go. And in this color palette, just scroll down here. Oh, that's not my scroll. Me. Uh, okay. There we go. 
Right, so if I scroll down here, we can see that we have palette.001. We'll hit plus and we can add the color we currently have on our color palette. So we'll get our orange color over here too. And we'll add again and we have our orange right here as well. So that'll be available for us if we want to move uh, to these different colors. So what I want is I want to select this one and we're going to make it a little bit darker. Uh, and for shading, we'll do a dark red ish color. Something like something like this. We just see how that looks like. Yeah, that's what we want. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, actually, let's go back here. Do dark here. I think we want something more like this. Maybe, maybe a little bit more darker. All right, so we want a nice clean one and then we can get even darker. All right. So we will go down here actually, and we'll start coloring this in. So this would sort of be where uh, we have our little mushrooms. What what would this be called, Denji? Is it like the mushroom's lungs? Do they like... Yeah, yeah the gills of the mushroom. There we go. So instead of having the radius pressure sensitive, we'll take that off. And we'll control that here so we can over here and rotate this around so that's sort of we have a nice line here Oop. we're going across with And we're just doing this to uh, going over this with black to add a little bit more depth. Since we're just um, we're trying to we're trying to uh, all right, there we go. Okay, we're just trying to have a uh, simulate shading here. So instead of adding extra topology to make a more like depth into the mushroom we're just gonna shade it uh, a little bit more black every time let's go back here and i think this would be the last section go over here like that and then we'll press f we'll go a little bit smaller Be careful not to go inside the mushroom. What? And we'll just do that one more time, I think. This time we're using all the pressure here. Who? Shield. Shield? You got him? Oh no, I'm, I, I was thinking about Shinkyu. Yeah, he's really cool. It's like fast with the sword and everything. You can tell he studies the the art of the blade. All right. And I think I'll just go increase the go over here again. increase that area all 
There we go. All right. Uh, let's see. I just want to go over here and. Oh. Press F. Freeze. Go down here and do a little bit of a mess here. All right, then what I want to do is I want to go over here to this tool. This is the little nudge tool here, right? The smear tool. All right. And with the smear tool, we'll go to strength one, and we're just going to go up here and bring this back up here. Sort of simulating a bit of dark dirt right here. All right. Now I want to go back. Actually, we haven't saved this color, so we'll do that real quick here. And we'll go back here and select the original base color. Decrease the size of our radius. And then what we're going to do is do the little gills. Now this will take a little bit of time. And we will take away the strength. And the radius because we want full per full per full per percent full percentage. Let me draw these gills here. They're like so. It doesn't have to be perfect, really. Um, actually, just try to keep a little distance between each one, if anything. Right. Back here. Just try to not have any anything in between. Oh, keep misclicking. Oh, do that again. What is this? Huh. Oh, interesting. Really? It's so weird, so it doesn't let us draw on that side in our perspective. 
see if it lets us here. There we go. All right. Oh, it kind of looks like it has so many gills in there. All right, whatever. We'll go back in here and we will go over here. You start activate our strength toggle. And we'll increase the radius and we'll sort of merge these in here. Actually, we use a smear instead. So we don't overwrite that color there. I don't think I like that. All right, we're going to go get our original color. Do this again. I think this is much more better. There we go. We'll sort of go over here. Do kind of the same for these top bits. You see it's kind of pixelated here, but that's because our texture image that we started with wasn't that big of, didn't have that much resolution. It was 1024 by 1024. I think we completed the loop there. Go back here, select this color, and we will go over here and, oh, not that. Again, with our radius set uh, with all pressure sensitivity, but our strength, we do have that. We'll go over. these sections right here. Let's 
so. Right? Increase, uh, decrease the radius a bit more. Just to. Give it a bit more depth. I think we made a full loop around, right? Looks like it. Just go like this. All right, and then we'll just increase this. Go over here again, and dirty it up a bit more. Back, go back over here and smear it up again. Right. We'll bring this orange color down more, a bit more. Oh, more. I need it to be more. Are you okay? If you want to start the stream, NG, I'm almost done here. Oh, gotcha. Did you invite your friends? Oh boy. So I see the problem here. It looks like we have uh, the seam right there. So let's just select, go over here a little bit more. Okay. Mm. Let's see. Go back to our orange and make it a little bit more orange. More orange. There we go. And we'll just go back to our top here. Seven. Seven. We have a little bit of strength. We'll just go over a little bit more. It's like that. There we go. I think that's fine. And we will use the smudge tool. Two. Bring that color down. Yes.
let me just activate the rendering because the light is starting to bother me. What it looks like, we want to mess over here with the brush too. We're gonna be careful we don't paint down there down there all right and actually we'll add this to our colors and we'll go down here well, down here so seven we'll try to decrease the size of this and we will uh, we'll color this actually let's go to perspective here Sort of color this area down here. And what our smudge tool will bring this down again. Bring this up a little bit more here. It's just a little bit too drastic. All right, I think that's fine. Mm, let's see. Bring this down a little bit more. It's like so. All right, and I think the last thing I want to do is I want to add a little bit of white here. So I'll just return to the original state of this. Right there. Increase the there, and then I'll grab a little bit of a, a purple, but more orangey tinge to here. All right, and let's grab this, bring it up here. There we go and it's kind of yellowish so i think that'll be good i'll just paint it on top of here oh is that working Let's cancel that out. We'll get closer here.
I don't think they'll be fine. There we go. Hmm. I'm still not liking the, these areas here. Let's go over here. Select, oh, add this to the colors. Select here, and just go over here like this. I don't know. I, I don't think these colors go well with each other. Take off the strength. Oh, that's why. Yeah, I think we'll just leave it like that. Yeah. Right, and down here, actually. Let's go to the smear tool. Bring these guys in. It looks less polygon-ish. Or something like so. Just remove the sec these sections right there. All right. And now, let's give this little mushroom a little face. Go back to the brush tool. We'll go here and think red, a uh, dark reddish color. So, would probably work. So let's put on the pressure sensitivity. Yeah, I think that'll work. All right. Oh. So to try to get the eyes out, we'll go to the front view. And we could color here, but it'll kind of look strange because we don't have the a symmetrical view of our mushroom so um one of the origins point or the origin point is fu function uh, i couldn't say that <laughs> the origin points function is that right here we can go up here and press uh scroll up here in this menu we can scroll over until we reach this little mirror uh sort of symbol right up here and we want to mirror over on the i believe the x axis will let us paint on here and since our origin point is right uh smack dab in the middle right here we can use that to color our eyes in We'll go here one and then we'll go to the right. Oh. Let's just try to find a middle here. What do we want this guy to look like? Like that. Increase our size a little bit more. There you go. And hmm. go in here and oh, let's take off symmetry now. And let's see, I'll activate the radius pressure, increase our size. We'll give him a little bit of a... Mm, I don't know about this, guys.
Uh, and I can never get these mouths right. Mouths right. Like a wide open mouth here. Yeah, something like this. All right, let me just clear that in. Like so. Let's go in here and sort of smudge this so it looks a bit less distorted. I'm not sure if we can fix this right there where the image is starting to show its pixels. Now control the pressure. Let's go full smear on here. Now, actually, can we? Uh, take this mouth and oh. mm, I don't like that. I think something like there is fine. I'll give him a little bit of a more worried face. What? Sorry, I. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> there we go. How about that? You like that? Look at him. He's so worried. He's like, mm, I don't know about this one. For <laughs> the adventure, Angie. I don't want adventure. I want the chest. Can we give him sort of like a brow here? I don't think so. I think we'll just keep him like this. All right, we'll just fix this little 
it right here. So. And this right here too. And we can use this blur tool, but I wouldn't suggest it. It's kind of lags the system. Not even sure if it's working. All right, we'll just nudge this a little bit right here. What's going on? I'm trying to think of any curve that we could add here. Yeah, something like this. There we go. <laughs> Hey, what are you thinking, G? Look. Like, no, oh, no, oh, I don't know what's going on. What's that? Oh, Overlord Nader. Nice, something you got there. Reminds me of something from Plants vs. Zombies. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's pretty cool. Ah, but I think you came in late. I was about to end the stream here. How are you doing, Nader? Let me see if I can smudge these areas up here, too. Let me toggle the pressure sensitivity there. So far, it's so good. What about you? I'm doing okay. I, uh, I just, uh, what's it called? I just bought this, uh, uh, display tablet and I'm trying to put it to good use here. There we go. So I think, I think for here, we'll end it right there. If you guys have, uh, want to add any more details up here? You could, I guess. But I think that'll be the end for the this session so uh <laughs> thank you nader uh nader you made it at the wrong time and i'm gonna end it right here but uh i'm going to upload the full stream uh over at uh at my youtube channel if you want to see the whole uh thing we went to uh went through to get here <laughs> um so uh thanks everyone oh nader thank you for following <laughs> um i think i'll uh probably save this file here Control s uh let me just bring this down here oh looks like my mouse ran out of battery oh no Okay, here we go. Shoop, bring this down here. So let's go back, back, back one more. Actually, I'll just save it on the desktop here. I'm going to make a new folder right there, and we'll call the we'll call this uh, orange mushroom. We'll go in here. We'll call this uh we'll call this just mushroom. Mushroom. And we'll save blend file right there. Okay. So one thing before we go, um since we have uh we're uh we're painting the texture right on here. Um, we want to save our texture file here. 
you can see up here the um, image option right here has a little asterisk next, next to it. And that's just Blender telling us that, hey, uh, you don't have this image saved. So the next time we enter Blender, uh, we might, uh, we will definitely and most positively lose our image texture. So what we want to do is go over here to our image uh, option here and go to save as. And let me just bring this down here. And we want to save this image texture right on inside of this uh, folder we, that we created. Uh, luckily enough, uh, Blender already set us up where I created the that blend file. And we'll call it like this, mushroom base color, PNG. And save as image. Boop, there we go. So I think I'll just open up the folder real quick here. We'll go over to our our desk desktop here orange mushroom and there we go you can see that our image has been saved right there so now we can close that up uh we can again control s just to make sure just to make sure we'll control s twice there we go <laughs> all right and let me just toggle out of window mode here Mm. let's see so when i close this let me open up my uh my folder here Boop. and we'll go to desktop orange mushroom so when i close this out well like so we will go back in here and i believe oh blender opened up up here all right, there we go. So now since we already have the image saved, we have uh, uh, we have access to the file instantly there. That's not always the case. Some, uh, we will definitely lose the texture image that we were working on if we didn't save it before. So since we saved it, it'll appear here again. So I think we'll leave it off here. Uh, you can continue to, uh, uh, draw on top of the same model, uh, even just by adding another image here and coloring it, um, again on the mushroom, you can color it with uh, the texture painting tools and then sort of swap out the materials or no, sorry, the texture images on the same mushroom or even just copying the mushroom over and then changing or switching between the texture images. So if you guys want to make your own mushrooms and, uh, you know, show it off to your friends. <laughs> hey, guys, I made a fun guy right over here. <laughs> uh, uh, go on ahead. It'll be cool. Um, what's it called? Oh, if you make any mushrooms, uh, I do have <laughs> fun guy, Nader. Uh, if you guys do make any mushrooms, uh, uh, tag me. I'm over on twitter and instagram uh just i don't know i'd like to see your mushrooms and how you guys painted it and everything so um i'll post this on uh youtube um everything's in our in the about section uh it's either below me or you can find my about section somewhere in uh twitch somewhere in twitch that's not very helpful um Go over there, uh, I have a YouTube link right there and all my other links. So my Twitter and my YouTube and my Instagram and other such links. Uh, tag me if you make anything, if you finish off a render of a mushroom. Uh, it'll be fun to see what you guys come up with. Uh, and again, uh, oh, since I have a YouTube channel, uh, like, subscribe and leave a comment. If you can, that'll be fun. And I will see you guys uh, next time. Nader, thank you for coming over <laughs> last minute. Um, yeah, I'll put, I'll, I'll put the, uh, the video of the stream over on the YouTube channel. So maybe you can see it from start to finish over there. Or just skip through if you already know certain things and, uh, just, you know, make it to this point. Stuff like that. So... <laughs> Thank you for joining. Also, take care. Bye-bye.